Okay, so <clears throat> today is Saturday, April 14th, and we are interviewing Ken Couture. Yes. Um, in Springfield, and my name is Cheryl Walker, and I'll be interviewing Ken. Ken, for the record, can you tell us what war and branch of service you served in? I was in Vietnam with the Marine Corps. Okay, what rank were you? I ended up being a corporal. Corporal. Where did you serve? I served, we started in Da Nang, and uh, we ended up in the Quang Tree, which is up north. And that's where I got wounded. Okay. What was your job in the assignment? Uh, I was old 311, and I did some recon work for our battalion. So. Okay. When you say recon, what do you mean? Uh, it was our missions. They got uh, various uh, calls, and they would send us out uh, to kind of scope out to see what the enemy is doing that time. The NAM, and we report back to our squad, and I mean to our tune, tell them what's going on, so they have some idea what they're going to come up with a game plan to uh, go out to intervene with the enemy. Did you ever figure out what the game plan was, or help figure uh, out? Basically it was just to find out if uh, how many army, uh, armed forces, how many people, individuals are coming our way, and what kind of uh, plan we can set up to uh, intervene them as they approach us. Uh, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. So what were the awards that you can remember and medals? I know I've got the Vietnam uh, Service Combat Award. Naturally, we get to, uh, everybody gets the uh, service award that you serve time in the military. And then the one that sticks in my mind naturally would be the Purple Heart, which I ended up a long time in the hospital for. Okay. What was um, your stay? How was? Tell us about your stay, staying in touch with your family. Um, I tried to write when I was there, and I got letters and stuff in the beginning. Um, I got better contact with them, which uh, to this day I remember because my father's still alive. That uh, I call him because I was calling from the hospital in Yokosuka, Japan. And after the phone bills got up to be astronomical, my dad sent me some pens and paper and said, uh, Ken, why don't you write versus call? We'd like to hear from you, but uh, this would be a better option for you. <laughs> so you went to Japan for your recovery? Yes, first I went to, uh, they helicoptered me to Da Nang. I was there for a couple days. Um, at that time, uh, the general come by and gave everybody on that ward a Purple Heart, which, you know, at that time we didn't care and if you go up and down that road going you're going home you're going home and came to me says you're going to Yokosuka Japan I'm going oh, man are you kidding me so I was there at Yokosuka Japan I'd say for um, four months trying to put me back together again and from there I went uh, to me out to uh, back to Chicago here it's like Great Lakes Naval Air Force days to uh, do the rest of my rehab and from there I got discharged when you were stationed in Vietnam, did you have plenty of supplies? You know, I did not, because I was out in the field most of the time, I did, I think, I can only remember a handful of the hot meals, to be honest with you. Everything else was out of sea rations. I mean, because we were, we were, like I said, I was out most of the time. But back, once in a blue moon, we'd have uh, the battalion thing where uh, I'd take a back then once. One time I went to Da Nang and I went into the Air Force section and there it was kind of unique because you had to uh, check your guns and weapons in. I'm going, what the heck? But then we got to go to the clubs and we ate good there and I went back to the base and stuff. But uh, other than that, I didn't really, it was always sea rats. When you were at the Air Force base, our facility, yeah. was it an actual base or was it out in the field? No, it was an actual base in Da Nang. But it was a whole different lifestyle. I mean, they had uh, the Air Force had uh, showers, uh, officers' clubs, uh, NCO clubs. I mean, it was a different way of life. 
nobody carried weapons. I'm going, and then we're at war. What the heck's going on? Because I kind of resisted at first when he asked me, you know, to uh, turn my weapon and, and you get it when I leave. I'm going, oh, because I was not really crazy. I'm not doing that. But, you know, we uh, did that and went on our merry way. Did you do or have anything special for good luck? Before I went over the uh, seas, my uh, wife's father gave me this uh, Bible, it's a bulletproof Bible that fits in your pocket. Uh, I carried that at all times in my pocket over my heart. And lo and behold, uh, when, when I stepped on two Shikon grenades linked together, and it actually blew my flak jacket off, my shoes, and just tore me up. But nothing I say to this day, because I had a Bible of my heart, that being called superstitious, whatever you want, but it worked. And I would be sitting here otherwise, probably. Do you still have that Bible? You know what, I gave it to another Marine that was going to Iraq, and he did come back. And uh, no, he has not given it back to me yet, which I will get it back to him. How did you entertain yourself when you were over there? Very interesting. I was, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Platoon. Well, that's, that's me. I was like in a platoon with all, uh, I call them brothers. And then I we used to uh, just kind of jam the records and stuff that we had in our bunkers and stuff and uh, kind of entertain ourself. I worked out a lot. Um, we just stayed busy when we got off the field. I mean, I don't know jungle and stuff. But uh, that's for the most part just a uh, uh, tight-knit group of Marines that we just, uh, as all Marines do, we love each other. And we're a close-knit group and we never forget it. So uh, that's why I came out of the Marine Corps and uh, after discharge I became a Motown buddy. <laughs> Found myself up in Detroit a lot, you know. Trying to see other guys that I served with, which I never really did. Uh, I've been on the trail trying to find this one guy, uh, Corporal Dave Davis, that was my uh, compadre over there. We kind of watched each other's back. Uh, I was up to date, I have not found him yet, so. Where was he from? He was, uh, his sister actually sang with Martha and the Vandellas. And uh, he was originally from, I guess, he was down south. He was out of Florida. So I've tried various, like I said, various things to find him, but I have not, you know, been able to. But uh, we went on a cruise one time, uh, and actually went backstage because Martha and the Vandellas were were singing. Met his sister, and she did not know where he was. It's like when we were over there, we, and we were, he got wounded with me, by the way, and uh, we were laying next to me in the bed. He said, "We get back to the states, can I'll be back to normal." You'll be what you do, white. You know, I might bring a racism, but that's how it was back then. So. Did you um, stay in touch with any of the other? You know what? I know I lost most of my guys in my platoon. Uh, I've been unable to find anybody, to be honest with you. I've been to the wall in D.C. when it first opened up, which was uh, a moment uh, I'll never forget because I ended up uh, staying at this hotel down there with about, I'd say, like a couple thousand Marines. And we do these vigils at night and we go down to the wall with candles and stuff. And uh, it was kind of uh, real heart wrenching, if I'll put it that way. And then, I stopped doing it because it kind of screwed me up for uh, weeks after I got back. So I haven't been back there since. But I go to the C, uh, to this midwinter conference every year for the AV, and I go over there just to pay tribute to my uh, compadres. Were there entertainers that came to see your unit? Uh, not when I was there. What did you do when you were on leave? Did you get any leaves? I did not. You did not. How long were you over there? I was going to say that. 
Uh, yours truly lasted only three months. Ironically, uh, when I left, I told my wife, because I was married back then, I was married 19, I said, I'll be back uh, one way or another for Christmas, so I was. Do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual event? Uh, no, it was just fun. I mean, it wasn't fun, but it was just, uh, I'll go back to it. The camaraderie that I had with the guys, I'll never forget. It was just, uh, we kept everybody upbeat, I'll put it that way. So, it's something I won't forget because I know I was all there for a short time, but it's like 40 some years and I still remember what we did. So that's kind of saying something. What do you think of your, what did you think of your officers? <laughs> well, uh, we had one officer, Lieutenant, that just got sent out to us, which we really did not like because he did some things that I will not say. And, um, Hey, I'll just say it. I'm not saying it. Okay. Did you keep a personal diary? I uh, no, I did not. Do you recall the day your service ended? <coughs> uh, from Vietnam. From your service. Service overall. Um. January. First part of January, going into '69, I think it was. Was that what was that? Was that a memo memorable day? Was it? Uh, well, I actually let me go on discharge, medical dis. Well, I was getting a medical discharge from the Marine Corps uh, back in October of '68, and my son was born in December 18th and '68. 68. So it's just, yeah, it was memorable. It's just, you know, I was all of a sudden not doing nothing at the time. So I had a lot of time on my hands. So uh, luckily for me, my father uh, got me into a situation where um, uh, printing, I was an apprentice, and then from there I went into uh, various other things that I do now. But that really didn't answer your question, did it? <laughs> uh, all I can say, I went in initially um, for two years and I was sent to three, but that was because what happened to me and stuff. But I say, uh, if it wasn't for the fact that I got wounded, I probably would have retired Marine. I probably went full time. And my wife's aware of that too. Did you go back to school? I did not. I went into, uh, like I said, I got an apprenticeship and I did four years in an apprentice. I went back for uh, various uh, college for certain things that I had to do, like, like uh, programming, stuff like that, that went and doubled my job. Uh, other than that, I got into involved with little politics and stuff, and, uh, and now I am. Uh, I talk for a living, I'll put it that way, salesman. So I don't have to really break my back and talk, do all my work with my mouth. <laughs> Did your military experience influence you thinking about war or military in general? Uh, yes, it did. Um, I joined this organization that I met the Disabled American Veterans back in, uh, well, 82. They helped me out with things, but because of the fact I worked nights, uh, I really didn't get involved in it. And then one day my neighbor was belongs to the Disabled American Veterans talked to me. And uh, I've been doing it ever since to the point now that it makes me feel really good because I'm giving back to them what they gave to me. I'm trying to help the people coming back from uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, the same benefits and uh, things that they gave to me to give to them. So now it's like a mission of mine. I, uh, I hope and help the, any veteran you know, needs something. I try to uh, help them out any way I can. So that way it's been a quick war.
Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, not really. Just if uh, any of you disabled American veterans need help, you should definitely get it and come to us at the DAV and we'll uh, point you in the right direction as they have done for me and many uh, millions of other veterans that are in our position. So if you need help, don't stand back and uh, put yourself in the corners. Seek help. Ken, I want to thank you for the time that you served. Thank you. It's an honor to have men like you serving our country. And the time that you put in is very, very honorable. Thank you. Thank you for serving.